In this video, I want to show some examples of using NumPy and random numbers to, for example, make a probability estimate. So the thing I want to estimate is, say I choose a random number, a random integer between negative 50 and 50 inclusive, what's the probability that number is less than 10? And you can probably figure that out exactly, but I want to show you how we can uh, make an estimate of this probability using NumPy. So uh, let me start uh, up here and let me instantiate a random number generator from NumPy. So I've already imported NumPy and then we'll do RNG equals np.random.default RNG. And then I eventually want to, like I want to start this with a fairly short array and then later for getting my probability estimate, I want to use a much longer array so that I can get a hopefully more accurate probability estimate. So instead of like typing 20, if that's how many numbers I want to use at first, I'm going to type n and I'll define n to be 20, let's say. Okay, and then later when I want to change this to 10 million, that'll be much easier. Okay, so this will be review from a previous video. How do I get random integers using NumPy between negative 50 and 50? And maybe the only tricky thing I've done is I said I want to include the 50, so I have to go past that. So we'll do rng.integers from negative 50 to 50 and then size n. And even though I said it a second ago, I already forgot and was writing the wrong upper bound. So let's change this to 51. So that way it'll include 50 as a possibility. And let's save this as ARR. And I also want to have a list version of the same numbers. So I'll write my list equals list ARR. And you might have wondered like why I always use this random name, my list. Why not call it, for example, list? Well, there's sort of a hint here by this being colored in green. That's a built-in function. Okay, you can already see it over here in, in Python. And so if we were to try to define list equals list of ARR, that's, that's going to overwrite the old meaning of list and things won't work correctly until we restart the notebook up here. So it's important to use a sort of random name. And I have enough experience that I sort of know like, okay, array is okay to use, list is not okay. But at the beginning, you should just always make the name a little bit random to uh, prevent it from conflicting with something built into Python. Okay, so there's my list. Great. And now for the next question, how many of these integers are less than 10? So let's first see how to do this using my list. So here's the for loop way. I could initialize a count as zero and then for x in my list, if x is less than 10, maybe, maybe I'll change this to say strictly less. Okay, well, which is what I meant here. Usually I'll say less than or equal to if I want to include the possibility of 10. So for x in my list, if x is less than 10, count, hey, I could either do count equals count plus one, or I could do count plus equals one. Hey, those mean the same thing. This is saying increase count by one. And uh, a lot of people, when they're starting out with coding, will be tempted to do something like else count equals count. But this isn't doing anything. It's just saying leave count as it is. So we should just get rid of that whole else clause in the if statement. And let's see what we got. So only 13. That makes me think I did something wrong. No, I, I guess 13 out of 20 sounds fine. I was thinking it should have been 13 out of 50. Okay, so that is the for loop version of this counting. Let me show you the list comprehension version of this counting. So we still haven't gotten to NumPy yet. Well, first I'm going to make a list containing just these numbers that are strictly less than 10. And it's going to be very similar to, um, to this portion here. Okay, this portion and this portion. So only thing that's going to be different is what should go into the list. And that's just going to be these x's. So we'll say x 
Okay, and then this part is going to be the exact same as this. So we're going to make a new list that contains x for x in my list. And if we stopped right here, this would be the exact same as my list. It would take every element in my list, put it into a new list, and it would be the exact same list. And so the thing that makes it different is after this, for x in my list, I'm going to say if x less than 10. So basically the exact same thing is here, except here I'm making a list instead of doing this count. And then to actually get how many elements occur in that list, I wrap it inside this len to get the length. And I got the same, same number 13 here. Okay, good. Now let's see what the NumPy array version of this is. And maybe it won't be obvious, but this is also using broadcasting that we talked about in a previous video. So we're going to say ARR strictly less than 10. And so what this does is it takes every number in ARR and checks, is it less than 10? So uh, like, for example, let's look at ARR. We haven't done that yet. And then let's look at ARR less than 10. And so what it's doing is it's asking, is negative 20 less than 10? Yes. So that's where this true comes from. Is 7 less than 10? Yes. Is 32 less than 10? No. So that's where this false comes from. And so if I just want to count, there are a couple of different ways to do it. But I believe the fastest way is to use count non-zero. And so you can think of true as one and false as zero. And so this count non-zero is checking how often did true occur in this case. So I put ARR less than 10 in here, and I should get that same number 13. Okay, so that was three different ways to make this count, and you should imagine that the NumPy array is much faster than the others. Okay, so uh, let's go to this next one. And so this is asking, at what indices do these integers less than 10 occur? So I'm not going to do that for the list version, because we're not going to do this very often. I just want to show you the way of doing it in NumPy. So I can say NP, and instead of count non-zero, I'm just going to say non-zero, ARR less than 10. So this is saying in the zeroth index, the first index, not, not the second, but the third index, and so on. These are where the entries are less than 10. And one, one subtle thing to notice here that I often get confused by is notice that this is not returning a NumPy array. It's returning a tuple, and the tuple is length 1, and the initial thing in that tuple is the NumPy array. And so that's sort of annoying in this case where we have a one-dimensional array, but that will be convenient later when we have two-dimensional arrays. Okay, make a new array containing only these integers. So I think I will only show this. No, I'll show this for the, the list version and for the NumPy version. So let me copy this. So here's going to be the for loop version. Instead of using count, we'll say new list. Instead of initializing as zero, we're going to initialize as an empty list. And instead of doing this count plus equals one, we'll do new list dot append x. Okay, and if we look at new list, it should start out negative 27, negative 46. Let's see. Negative 27, negative 46. Uh, here's the list comprehension version. Basically the same as what we did up above, just without the len wrapper. So x for x in my list if x less than 10. Okay, there we get this same list. And probably the most important is how to do this using NumPy. And there's a way to do it using this np.non0. I don't think that's the usual way to do it. So let me remind you what this arr less than 10 looks like. And then if I use what's called indexing with this arr less than 10, so maybe I'll also show you what ARR looks like. 
And so how you should think about this is it's going to be saying, keep the zeroth, keep the first, discard the second, keep the third, and so on. Okay, so keep, keep, discard, negative 20, seven, but there's no 32. Okay, here is the last thing I wanna do in this video, which is get a probability estimate. And so using a length 20 NumPy array, that's not going to be helpful for getting an accurate probability estimate. So um, let me change n. I'll, I'll do n equals. I tried this out before the video to see what's a good length that doesn't take too long. And so let's just copy, let's copy all of these list examples. So where did I have the count? Okay, here was the count. And I guess I need to make the NumPy array first. And then I'll make my list to be the list version of this NumPy array. And then let me come up here and get this count. And so this is where I'm glad I used N here, so I didn't have to change that. And so at the end, I want to know what is the probability. So the formula I use for that is number of successes divided by number of experiments. So in this case, I think of each number in, in the array as an experiment. And so like here, success, here, success, here, failure, here, success, and so on. And the estimate is number of successes divided by number of experiments, or in this case, it's going to be count divided by and length of my list, okay, which we know is n. So it didn't take too long. And I mean, what should it have been? Well, 100 numbers here, 60 of them are less than 10. So it should be about 60% or about 0 0.6 probability. And this looks pretty good, so, uh, so that seems good. And let's just time how long this took. We'll do time it, and then I'll run this same code. And while we're waiting for that, I'll go get the list comprehension version of this count. Okay, it took about one second. It took 930 milliseconds. Let's do the same thing for the list comprehension version. Okay, so um, that's a little bit faster, which to me was a little counterintuitive because here you're not making any new list, but here we're making a new list and then computing its length. So it was a little counterintuitive to me that this was faster and not a huge amount faster, but still noticeable. Okay, then uh, last one. Let's time the NumPy version of this. So np.count non-zero. And we want to know how often are these elements in ARR less than 10. And we should expect that this is going to be much faster. Yeah, so it's about over 100 times faster than either of the list versions of this. And so I said the probability should be about 0 0.6. Let's just try the same thing again. I'm not going to do the list version and see if See if we get something maybe on the other side of 0 0.6. Let's check. So here, because I've run this code again, now I should get a different number. Oh, and I should also divide it by n. So it's kind of strange that this is so similar to this one. I mean, they're both almost exactly 0 0.594. And so that should make us think that I'm probably I'm wrong when I say 0 0.6. And you see what's wrong with my, my claim that there are 60 numbers less than 10, 60 of these 100 numbers. Well, the problem is there are actually 101 numbers in here. Okay, from negative 50 to 50 inclusive, that's 100 numbers, 101 numbers. So if I check what's 60 divided by 101, 
hey, here I get this exact same 0 0.594 number. So you can see that 10 million was enough to be quite accurate for, for these probability estimates that we were making. So I'd say the overall thing to know is these different ways of making estimates, like whether counts or whether finding elements, how to, how to make those computations using NumPy, because usually the NumPy versions are going to be much faster than the list versions of these computations.